Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep, number 92, I think. <laughs> So, thank you for listening um, or watching, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and also um, please remember to only listen or watch this when you can safely close your eyes as this let me bore you to sleep. recording and video may cause you to be bored to sleep. Now, um, for those of you who listened to yesterday's and the day before's recordings uh, I just like to explain in fact probably spend the whole hour talking about this unless of course something else grabs my attention which is very very possible I've got an itchy eye You know, I always wash my hands when I've been out. Whenever I've been out, so if I get on a bus, I've been somewhere public, when I get home, I always wash my hands. Like, properly wash them, not just under the cold tap. If I forget about it, then the germs won't exist anymore. Not that kind of, you know, under the cold tap, I'll now forget all about the hygiene that I learned about, uh, you know. It's, I mean, proper washing with hot water and soap. And I actually learnt how to wash my hands properly. God, this is even so boring already. Wow. I've hit a, a new level of boredom. I can't believe he's talking about washing hand washing it's talking about washing his hands as a start how could you get more boring it can it will I actually I did health and safety courses quite early on in my life because firstly I was in the sea cadets and we did a bit of uh, a little bit of health and safety, uh, fire safety, uh, first aid, you know, things like that. And a lot of the actual sort of kind of courses were done in one of the. It was a hut. I was going to say shed, but hut. I think basically hut is just a bigger version of a shed. And a smaller version of a shed would, I suppose, just be a box, wouldn't it? So a box with a door. So it was in this shed or hut. It's the same place we used to learn to do knots you know how to make knots and I never really saw the point of how to make a knot and it wasn't just how to make a knot it was how to make 
lots of different knots. And I did not see the point. I've waited over 30 years to say that sentence. I did not see the point in learning how to do knots. Not, 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 not. And because it was the Sea Cadets, it was all about not aviation, that's flying, isn't it? Uh, not sea, not water sports. Um, sea, seafaring? Water, I suppose sea sports, sea, what the right word is? But it's, you know, it's about boats and ships and the water. And I was never really a swimmer. I don't mean like professionally, you know, I'm not sort of, uh, by the way, I was never in the Olympics. It's not, it's not like a throwaway kind of comment. It's, it's a valid comment uh, considering the topic uh, that we're talking about, you know, the sea cadets and stuff. And I think the point for the sea cadets is it's a, a precursor to joining the Navy. And I never had any ambition to join the Navy. It just, it wasn't something that I was interested in doing. Although my brother joined the Navy and he loved it. And he was in the air cadets. I was interested in joining the army because I wouldn't go near a plane. Um, not really into heights or the sea. I suppose really the land that's the part that I was more interested in. I've kind of been on, on the ground. I think it's nice to be able to jump up and down without getting wet. It's, you know, just, maybe it's just me, but, you know, it's like when I used to play football, I used to like to just spin around till I got dizzy and then fall over. can't do that in the sea you can't do that in the air especially if you're flying a plane mm. so in the sea cadets uh, some of the people well, I, say they, I say people I mean kids although they are still people technically aren't they they were perhaps wanted to join the Sea Cadets. And there was one person there, his name was Jason as well. And he, his dad was, his dad was either in the Navy or had retired from the Navy. Yeah, that's it. His dad was either in the Navy or had retired from the Navy, but he was one of the officers in the Sea Cadets. And then there was another uh, kid who's actually older than me, probably a year or two older. And his dad owned the... was actually my boss, because he owned the local news agent and I used to go to the news agent and I used to deliver papers like early I think I did early mornings and evenings as well so I had two different paper rounds at various times so he also had a paper round because I remember so I had an evening round first I think and the evening round was so easy. It was spread over a long, a long area, a 
big area, but it was a really easy round. I liked it. It was uh, quite a. I don't know, even apart from the rain, you know, raining and paper rounds isn't necessarily the best uh, combination. For some reason, I was thinking like syphilis and cheesecake, but this, that doesn't make sense. But the if you've got something that's made of paper, that has to be put through a slot that's made of metal. you kind of need the paper to be intact and kind of solid. And the only real way to get it through that slot, that letter box, I think it should be called a letter slip or letter slit, or not not letter gash, but letter, because uh, it's not a box, is it? It's more of a, uh, a slot, a letter slot, but then it's not just for letters, because papers can go through it. But I just remember the first day with the delivery, and I was holding this newspaper up in my hands, and holding like both sides, and there was this letter box, and I was thinking. How is this going to get inside that house? It's like this, this is, it was a real problem. It was one of those mind benders, you know. And I was like, how is, how am I going to get this into there without breaking the law? You know, I didn't want a criminal record. Imagine that. What are you in for? Oh, I was trying to deliver a newspaper. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't really what I wanted. So, so after about the uh, eighth delivery, you know, ringing on people's doorbells and handing them the paper. Someone eventually said to me, well, the best way is if you, if you roll it up, if you roll the newspaper up and then push it through the letterbox. And I thought, to be fair, I started laughing. I was a little, I was slightly embarrassed. It's like, oh, of course. Now it makes sense. And, uh, you know, the other person, they kind of, I think she was wearing a tiara. I don't know if that's really relevant. I used to get real, real black fingers from all the print of the newspapers. And I sometimes used to forget so I'd be scratching my face and rubbing my face and stuff and I'd come home and I'd just have all these marks all over my face. It looks like I've been working down a coal mine or something, but without their helmet. Because um, I think you could, I don't know much about coal miners, but I think one of the perks of the job is you got to take the the hat home with you, didn't you? I'm not sure if you could take all the costume back home with you, but you should be able to take the hat or the helmet back. Because I've seen, I've seen film footage of people walking out of the mine holding the helmet or wearing it even. I mean, it's kind of holding it, isn't it? You don't have to, it doesn't have to be in your hands in order for something to be held. 
if you balanced a baby on your head, you're holding the baby, aren't you? Technically. Or if you, I don't know, we're just cradling a, a pensioner in, you know, in your lower back. It's still, it's support, isn't it? It's still holding. It's, uh, <laughs> and things get stranger. But being in the Sea Cadets was... I didn't... I wasn't very, su wasn't very successful in the Sea Cadets. I think I broke the record for taking the longest period to get the first merit badge. So I think the first merit badge or the first thing was... Uh, A private seaman or something I, f I forget I might have that wrong and it took me about two years to get it and I kept failing and I kept sort of uh, giving the wrong answers to the questions and not doing the knots right um, you know just partly because I didn't care and eventually I passed and they handed me and it was like a I think it was a stripe or whatever that had to be attached to the uniform and I think word got around that I'd attempted and sort of not passed on quite a few occasions and I'd broken all records along that way. And then when I eventually did pass, everyone started cheering and clapping and balloons appeared out of nowhere. And outside, all, the whole town had come together holding candles. A couple of people had Kit Kats as well, but mainly just candles. And word had got out. And I remember we walked down. Well, they carried me, in fact. They carried me on this... All I can say, it was like a big metal plate kind of thing that you perhaps uh, have a turkey on. And they carried me all the way down to the seafront. And it was a little dolphin display on the beach. You say, why was it, why I wasn't it in the sea? Well, we didn't really have dolphins locally in the sea. So they just basically got some dolphins from elsewhere and just tossed them to each other. But it was still a display. There was uh, a few fireworks as well. But the whole point is, like, I couldn't believe that such a outrageous story could possibly be true. And I was amazed. I think what amazed me most, really, is that I didn't get any sand in my shoes from the beach. But having that, you know, having that um, stripe, I think it was like one stripe that he was put onto my shoulder. I think having that one stripe, I remember looking at it when I got home and feeling nothing because <laughs> it was meaningless to me it was it was like an accomplishment that didn't mean anything 
it's uh, it's like you know if you you put your shoes on or you dry your hair or you do the washing up and someone sort of pops out and says well done that was great here's a here's a silver cup to mark uh, what an amazing accomplishment washing up is and it may be meaningless in a different situation it may be an amazing thing maybe you've due to circumstances you've had to work up to being able to wash up again maybe you've not been able to physically do it so then that, that, that situation maybe having someone jump out of the kitchen cupboard uh, handing you a you know, silver cup would be nice I'm guessing it would be scary but maybe nice you know it'd be funny if they slipped and landed in the sink and they ended up with a silver cup on their head like a little throne but it wouldn't get stuck because of all the soap and the washing up liquid so the reason I didn't have my website for two days is because I got rid of it and the reason I got rid of it was it's a mixture of things I I'd made quite a few changes to the website prior to deletion I decided that now anyway at the moment I'm not going to I took away the downloads that were on there basically because people stopped downloading because the stuff on there is free so they were just streaming it so therefore we didn't need all the free stuff to be downloadable plus I think the reason why people some people were put off from downloading although I did have a lot of downloads but uh, downloads downloads I said it wrong didn't I downloads sometimes I get a little bugged by that the way people say stuff it's like I noticed that with news readers where they they stress certain words wrongly because they're clearly reading a sentence for the first time and they're also not uh, intellectually perhaps comprehends comprehending what they're reading but that's just one of my little one of my little tic tacs one of my little nipple rings I call it a nipple ring because it's kind of like you pull on it and it's just there's a there's a sensation there. Uh, trigger triggers me a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I changed the website, got rid of the downloads, uh, and then because I've been focusing more lately on not more lately but more lately on the Spreaker podcasts because that's where my work is done that's where I uh, upload my podcasts that's where I record my podcasts as well now and I'm using the Spreaker app as I speak 
to record this podcast and then I upload it and then I edit it and then I you know do what's needed then I share it onto Facebook Twitter a couple of other places then I create a YouTube video out of the audio plus the video you know I do that stuff so I process that render it which takes a couple of hours sometimes then I upload that video to my YouTube channel and then when that's available I share that with various different uh, social network places like Facebook and Twitter so on Spreaker the so for example if you go onto my website jasonnewland.com the very first page there is a list of mp3s that you can stream and it's the very latest of what I've done so at the moment actually not at the moment because when you listen to this it will be this this recording uh, depending on when you listen will be at the top but at this moment as I speak uh, deep sleep whisper hypnosis number 41 is at the top of the list that's the one that is the last produced the, the, the newest one so that's right at the top of the page on my website and underneath that is a list of all of the other latest ones that I've done but always at the top is the, the latest one and it's in order from the one out what I produced so the last you know the last 10 that I produced will be in the last the top 10 on the list and you can just play it just stream it there also if you go to the left hand side of the website there's also uh, like relaxation hypnosis chronic pain relief sleep hypnosis and there's different you know things let me bore you to sleep deep sleep whisper hypnosis and you click on any of those and it will take you to a page which is pretty much identical to the home page but instead of well, it basically it's just got the playlist for that particular uh, content for example the chronic pain relief sessions will all be in a playlist of mp3s that you can stream with the most recent one at the top so I think that makes sense so that's what I've got so I changed that before I deleted it and part of the reason of deletion is because I ended up having to borrow some money this week or last week I knew for a few days so it was like Friday or Saturday and I paid it back yesterday to a friend but I didn't feel very comfortable I don't I don't like borrowing money and it also left me short for this week so it's 30 pound that you know it's it's, it's a pro you know it's, it's a standard thing isn't it but and I started thinking oh I suppose in a way I kind of got a little bit carried away and uh, catastrophizing a little bit and started thinking what can I get rid of what can I cut down on my costs of stuff and so I got rid of the website I got rid of SoundCloud and 
I got rid of a few things. Something that I do use is an app called Audible. A U D I B L A. And it's basically an audio book application. And I do I do pay seven pound ninety nine a month for that. And every month I get a token which I can use to buy a book of any cost, of any amount of money it costs. That token can buy that book. And I also have the option to buy as many books as I want, you know, with my own money as well. It's very kind of them. So I like listening to audio books, especially educational ones. Um, especially motivational ones as well. Uh, I like to listen to motivational speakers and public speakers such as Zig Ziglar. Um, there's, there's, there's quite a few different ones um, that I've been listening to. So uh, I've yeah, I got Zig Ziglar yesterday or the day before. I think it was, yeah, yesterday. And it's uh, kind of the best of him. So it's about 14 hours of his talks. And Jim Roll Roan is another one. And I think his was about 15 hours of him. And I've I listened to most of his. I've not listened to him before, but I've listened to a lot of Zig Ziglar back in like 20 years ago or something, um, especially leading up to my sales days and during my uh, early sales kind of career, if you want to call it that. I was very motivated to be good at selling and just to kind of be the best, I suppose. I was really wanted to be good at what I did. And I kind of, I still do, really, if I'm honest. Um, not in competition with anybody else, just to, there's something about, you know, just maybe doing my best, doing what I can and I'm trying to help other people. But to try and maybe do it well, maybe. I don't know. It's a difficult one because because I'm purposely being boring. But at the same time, I'm also talking about stuff that I find interesting. And in some some ways, you could train a tortoise to do this. If a tortoise could talk, you know, so you could sort of say, well, anyone can just sit there and talk for an hour about nothing. It's, yeah, it's a kind of conflicted, is this a skill or is this just like nothing um, however these let me bore you to sleep sessions are becoming more popular I've got a, a few fans of these things for some reason and which is why I'm still doing them because if you know anything about me you know that I I don't still, I don't keep at something if people aren't listening or watching. So, you know, I'll dance around in front of the window in the evening with the lights on and I'll dance. But if I, if I don't see any curtains, if I don't see anybody with a telescope looking, if I, you know, then I stop. That's my point. No, I'm, I'm joking. I, I continue, I continue. 
for hours. No, I don't. This reminded me of Star Trek for some reason. Something about dancing in front of a window reminds me of watching the early episodes of the original Star Trek series on a television. So yeah, this is something that I would do a few recordings and then if it's not kind of working out I'll or you know not maybe to my satisfaction or I get bored I'll stop but for some reason and I don't know why for some reason I have continued with these let me bore you to sleep recordings I genuinely don't really know why I'm still doing them but I've had a lot of I say a lot I mean I'm probably exaggerating if I say a lot but most of the comments I get are private messages so they're not um, which I, I like you know I like getting any kind of uh, positive feedback it's lovely it's a lovely thing I do appreciate it and I should make more of an effort to respond actually um, sometimes I'll get a, a a really nice message saying thank you and I like what you do and then making a request and that takes me in a different direction and I forget to respond because I try I'm starting to think about okay can I do that request how does it fit in with what I do and just like a few weeks ago I actually put it on Facebook what would you like me to talk about and I had a few you know messages and in fact Barbarella, is it Barbarella? I forget your name, sorry. I remember your face, but I just, you know, it's on Facebook and you asked me maybe to talk about my books. So that's, that's a video that I could do because I could have the books in front of me. But you know, and I will do that, I just forgot. But I did do another one that was about what would I do if I was given a hundred thousand pound and I had to spend it within a week and I did kind of discuss that but I think that was was that on a live recording I did I I think so see five years ago I'd love to have done a whole video just on my books because I had well, for me, you know, personally, I felt it was a really, really good book collection. Now I don't have such a great book collection. I do have still, I don't know, a couple of hundred books, maybe less. But I used to have like five or six hundred, and I had a lot of hypnosis books. And a lot of uh, like psychology, philosophy, uh, Buddhist books. Um, when I was younger, I used to have a lot of poetry books. Uh, but kind of, I was into the beat generation poets, like American, you know, forties, fifties kind of poetry. That's what I liked. And uh, like, I don't know, I was going to say Allen Ginsberg, but I'll be honest, I struggled a bit with Allen Ginsberg. He's, he did a, he's very famous for a poem called Howl, Howl, a nice croaky howl. 
And it was just a very, 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 very long rant at his mum. It was, it was a very long poem. And it was... Uh, I think sometimes... Knowing about the poem beforehand can... I don't know so in my way it feels like it can kind of spoil it a little bit if you know too much about you know where it came from and what the person was doing whilst they were writing the poem see you could listen to me and you know there could be one day a, a recording and it's like and it ticks all the boxes for you and it's like okay wow that that did something that actually really made a difference there's something uh, transformational about that it might tick all the boxes for you and you might hold that one particular recording in some kind of uh, high esteem and people have told me that they have these feelings sometimes about some of, you know, the odd recording that I've done. But I'm just saying it as an example. But then if you find out that I was sitting here dressed as a clown and my feet are, you know, sort of in a big bowl of hot water with apples bobbing around... And there's a table, and there's lots of these cardboard cut out members of the royal family with jam all over their face. You might think, oh, maybe you've, you don't have, it, it, it might not, it might taint it in some way, it might change the way you feel about that recording in some way. So, I'm just letting you know I'm not dressed as a clown. I do have a big red nose, but it's not, yeah, it's just natural. My feet are, I've got a size 10 feet. So I think I'm kind of averagey kind of toe. I think quite large, I mean 20 would be large, but I think... My feet are kind of a nice size, a nice size 10. I'm only 5 foot 8, so I'm not particularly tall. And most of my weight is upper body. And I'm not, I'm not walking around, I haven't got little matchsticks for, for legs. So I, have, I do have legs, it's not... That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Imagine having matchsticks for legs. And there was a point to what I was saying. But I don't know what that point was. And it doesn't matter. Because there doesn't need to be a point to anything, ever when it comes to these recordings sometimes I'll be doing I'll be making a recording and it'll be one of my more I don't want to say serious ones but you know sort of maybe like a proper recording uh, a hypnosis-y kind of stuff and I'll just sit there and I just Occasionally my mind goes blank. And it's only for a very short time. And I always pull it back. I always manage to... Whenever I make a recording like that, I always manage to pull it off. Which is good. So there's always a, there's always a happy ending, you know, when I make recordings. The thing is, I... I like a happy ending. It's good. 
it's I think like yes I don't think it was yesterday no it was yesterday yesterday evening I decided to make a pain relief session a chronic pain relief session and I sat down on my big black squeaky chair as I am now but for some reason I'm able to I'm just not moving around much so you can't really hear the squeakinessness of it Andre is happily asleep in his bag I don't know why that is but he spent the day with a dog today his uh, friend who's a dog and he got to go out yeah, he's been out once for a walk but he seems to feel be quite calm I think when his space is taken away from him he appreciates it when it's got it back so he's just relaxing So I was last night, I was, it's probably, I don't know what time it was, it was probably about half eleven, uh, later than tonight, tonight is, it's, pretty, it's not even half, no wait a minute, it's about half ten nearly, it's getting on, let's have a look. 22.18 so it's 10.18 see I learned that when I was in the sea cadets I learned the 24 hour clock because when I was a kid we didn't have 20 hour clocks 20, 20 or 24 hour clocks either it was just 1 2 3 4 Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then after twelve, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then after twelve, it's one again, then two, three, four. And that's how the time used to be when I was a kid. And how we used to be able to tell the time, for example, if it was, let's say it was 11.30. So you'd see the clock on the wall or the one on your on your wrist I know you may call it a watch but I still call it a clock you stick a Mars bar on your head doesn't mean it's a hat so it's still a you know it's a, it's a wrist clock and why call it a watch I mean yeah you watch it but you watch a television, you watch a television. And call a radio a listen. Those of you that don't know what a radio is, it's. Uh, it used to be something that people listened to before television. But it's. Actually, and I'm kind of making this up partly, radio is possibly more popular now than it has been.
for a long time in its current format in a sense of maybe podcasts you know radio shows talk radio you know like speech and podcasts like this for example I think it's because of the human touch the human aspect of it like with the human voice you can you kind of get an idea of who you who you're dealing with who you're talking to and um, on television there's a lot of a lot of acting even for presenters and new news readers and you know things like that it's still kind of acting involved you know putting on their best behavior and dressing up and rehearsing and I think with things like podcasts or live radio there's no rehearsal it's live it's it's just the person being themselves and it's only the people that are themselves that can actually have a career I was going to I was going to say forge a career in radio and I did think about whether I'd like to do radio and I quite like it the idea of doing it but in sort of this format in a way maybe this format plus playing songs maybe does that make sense where I can just be me and just I don't think and I don't know, but I don't think early mornings would be right for me. But I'm not sure. Plus, I quite like the idea of... I guess drive time wouldn't be any good. You know, listening to me while you're driving. It would be the... Especially for people that are kind of conditioned to listening to me when and you know falling asleep through boredom or through my amazing hypnotic skills so yeah so if you're out there and you're thinking ah you know what this this man this Jason Newland he could be a radio presenter for our radio show and I don't know why but I seem to be again I don't want to use the word popular but 80% of my listeners live in the United States of America. 80%. At the moment, I'm getting about 1,000 listens a day. So that's 800 people around in America. You know, every day that are listening. And I know that 800 is not a huge amount of people. I do realise that. You might think that, but you try and fit them into your bath. Then you realise that 800 is quite a lot. You try and feed them all. You try and balance them on top of your car. 800 is a lot. It's hard to judge it because I feel grateful that I've got a thousand a day, a thousand listeners pretty much every day. Sometimes it's more. And it's growing and it's growing. And you know, every every month it'll grow and you know, I'm pretty sure it'll get to the point where there's 
10,000 a day, maybe even 100,000 a day, I don't know. And it's, a be- yeah, for me, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it feels, I feel like maybe, okay, I'm perhaps making a difference, giving something. Because I know that people, human beings, for all our uh, faults and things, you know, the one thing that we don't do is you wouldn't listen to something unless it was useful. You watch television, listen to music, you know. It's like we don't do it unless there's some enjoyment to it. Or some pleasure or some usefulness to it. And it's not like television where you just leave it on and you might just have it on in the background. Because I very much doubt you'd have me talking in the background while you've discussing an upcoming wedding with the local vicar you know it's I'm probably I'm probably not elevator music you know well I'm not music am I but I do wonder perhaps is there a possibility of is there a niche somewhere that I can fit my little toes into and earn a living doing this you know have enough money coming in so I can pay my rent buy food Buy some nice clothes. Look smart. Maybe uh, have a a girlfriend. You know, meet someone, go out on dates. You know, help out my family. Especially with my dad, he's in his seventies now. I'd like to be able to help him. You know, in the future financially this is kind of my time when I should be looking after him so yeah it's just even if little things just if he you know in the future maybe he needs to go to the hospital for appointments I could pay for him to get a taxi there and back because I don't drive so I can't drive in there but I could go with him in the taxi or pay for the taxi if he needed to go into a care home I could pay for the care home so he didn't have to sell his house and give away you know so he didn't have to he could you know have family living there and stuff so he didn't have to sell everything to pay for the for the care facilities Although my dad would laugh at that, he says, oh, because he's, he's going to live to be over 100. But I do start, I've started thinking about things like that, you know. It'd be nice to have, it's not about being rich, although I've got a friend that keeps reminding me if, if you keep saying you don't want to be rich, then you'll never be rich. So I do understand the you know the energy universe and the kind of positive thinking aspect of it. But I'm not greedy. I'm really not greedy. Apart from when it comes to chocolate. Then I can be a little bit greedy. But not Is greedy, I think for me greedy is perhaps wanting more than other people have got. 
I don't want more chocolate than other people have because I'm not interested in what, what chocolate other people have I just want the chocolate whatever I get put it in my fridge and that's mine and I put a lock on the fridge so that no one can else can have any <laughs> is that greedy? I put a sign on my front door keep away my chocolate it's mine, mine, mine that's not greedy is it? Anyway, I just if there is anyone out there listening, anyone at all, anywhere, if you know a, a radio producer. In England, or even if it's online, I could do it from here, and it could be broadcast in anywhere in the world, couldn't it? But you know, it's it'd be a nice thing to do, I think, for the next twenty-two years. So I'll be able to retire when I'm seventy. So I'm forty-eight. Now, so that 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. So that's 10 years. 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 67, that's 66, 67, 68. So that's 20 years, 69, 70, 22 years. I might be able to retire at 68. But I think it's going to be 70. And by then, it might not be any age. It might not exist anymore. Retirement and pensions and stuff. And you know, even though some people might not class this as work I kind of do because this this doesn't just do itself and the processing the editing all the other stuff you know it's 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 a process and Can you imagine how many of these I'd have done by the time I'm 70? If I did one a year, no, one a year, one a day, if I did one a year, it would be 22. Plus 92. 100, 112, 114. If I did one a day, 365 days a year, times by 10 is 3,650, times that by 2, 3,650, three, six, Seven thousand one hundred and twenty or whatever. So seven and that's after this year. So that's that'll be nearly eight thousand of these let me bore you no, not seven thousand. So be it's over seven thousand. So I've only done it like ninety one. So imagine that. Maybe eight eight thousand. Yeah, about eight thousand, because the other two years, it's eight thousand. Let me bore you to sleep. Imagine me being on here when I'm eight seventy. Hello, welcome to Jason Newland. 
I have uh, deleted my website again. Yes. Uh, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. 8,046 Welcome to this and I thought I'd I thought I'd talk about my days in the sea cadets It's been a while I um I used to wear a hat. <sighs> so yeah, it's uh, it'd be interesting to to view it or to see what happens. Who knows? Can you imagine getting to the point where there's got to be a point where you're successful. Like a thousand a day for me is quite good. I think, well, that's pretty good. You know, it's over a quarter of a million a, a year. But then when it gets to two, three, four, five thousand, and then ten thousand, for so ten thousand, that's three hundred thousand a month. So it's like four, what, three point six million a year. It's like okay, there's got to be a point where these can be classed as a success. I don't know what that point is. Maybe I need a hundred million a day, and then it'll be classed as successful, and someone will come along and say, you know what? We know you're 93, but we really like your Let Me Bore You to Sleep sessions. We'd like to offer you a job. We'll pay you £100 a day to come in and record your show. What do you say? Yeah, well, it's, uh, well, um, welcome to jasonnewland.com. Well, uh, and, um, uh, uh, I used to be in the Sea Cadets. Mm, Andre the Ferret. to this when you can
It's like a, some kind of continuous throat fart. So, thank you for listening. It's been a little bit of a longer recording today, but that's partly because yes, uh, I don't know why really. I was going to say yesterday's was shorter, but I can't remember. So thank you for listening. I shall see you again very soon. Take care of yourselves. Remember, jasonnewlands.com is the place to be. It's the groovy place. And all of my recordings are on there. Take care. Bye.